It might look like a biological desert, the short grass prairie of South Dakota, but you'd better guess again. And oh yes, bring a shotgun. Presented by Federal Premium Ammunition and Pheasants Forever. When the air of September comes and with it our ancient urge to hunt, a remedy made to order is to answer the call of the wide open spaces of Western South Dakota. Well, here we go again. Another bird hunting season. Got my shotgun in the back. Got my dog Raven in the back. Cruising across the South Dakota prairie. I know what you're thinking. Going pheasant hunting? Oh, no, not. Gonna hunt what's called out here prairie grouse. Those are sharp tailed grouse. And if I'm lucky, I'll run into some prairie chickens. Pheasant season isn't even open. So this is one of the first upland bird hunting seasons in South Dakota. But the views are spectacular. Short grass prairie goes as far as your eye can see. And when you reach this historical river, the mighty Missouri, you know you're about to enter a magical place in America's West. Well, how's that for a million dollar view, huh? That's the mighty Missouri River behind me. And down below, little river town of Chamberlain, South Dakota. But what's really interesting is all that prairie behind me. See it way out there? That's where the prairie grouse live. Come on, Raven, time to go hunting. A new day on a South Dakota prairie begins like a small painting that slowly expands into a giant screen of golden light that eventually illuminates an endless horizon. When you're searching this vast country for native prairie grouse, it also pays to be an early spectator. We got sharp tails and what else here? And prairie chickens. Prairie chickens. You know, this is kind of a little pocket here where you can run into both. And this, there's about a hundred mile area here that have both in here, so and they're both legal. And, but pheasants aren't. Pheasants aren't, yeah. and we're gonna have those <laughs> too probably. So we gotta be on our toes. Well, let's head them up. Metal arcs. This is Matt Morlock, also a Pheasants Forever biologist and a prairie grouse fanatic. We pick a patch of prairie and prepare to head out. Okay, Raven. Okay, girl. Away she goes. <laughs> All right. I'm armed. This is Bob. Don't name your dog Bob. Oh. This Purina power card focuses on an English setter named Bob. Bob is seven years old, and when he hunts, he is either on turbo or just out for a walk. On this first one, you want to take this first finger and I'll go over the hill and push that second finger down and we'll meet up right down here. Raven okay. wants to get going. All right, here we go. That's an air girl, huh? Can't find him? Can't find him? That's a common lament for a prairie grouse hunter. So many hills and valleys, so many miles of unending grass. All of it potential hangouts for the two native game birds that inhabit this country, sharp-tailed grouse 
and prairie chickens. This, this ground here, never seen a plow, never seen a plow. So theoretically, you could be the first person who never stepped right there. These grass could be anywhere. <laughs> so I'm looking there, looking there. You just have to keep your eyes out. Raven looks a little birdie. Uh-oh, looks like Matt found something. Oh my. You know, something that goes on a lot, especially in Western South Dakota during droughts, is we get an outbreak of what they call EHD. Um, don't ask me the scientific name of that. Um, commonly it's called blue tongue, and it comes from biting flies, black fly. And you know, circle of life, you see here, this, thing, this buck tipped over, and coyotes came up and found it, and scavenged it, and on the cycle goes. So too, the cycle continues for us as we hunt for prairie grouse. While above, another hunter sails overhead, playing its own role in the cycle of life. The Plush, brought to you by Federal Premium Ammunition. Every shot counts. Benelli. And Purina Pro Plan. Two there. Then it flushed back up. When hunting western South Dakota for sharp tails or prairie chickens, the obvious always comes true. These prairie grouse can be anywhere there's a blade of grass. They erupt into the sky with no warning and fly to where your legs don't want to go. All right, man. So you hear my gun hear my gun go off? I did. I did. Was it successful? I know you're gonna be surprised, but I missed. And by the, yeah. time, by the time I had to figure out if, it, if that was a hand pheasant or a prairie chicken, that took, you know, a few seconds. And when I decided it was a prairie chicken, and then I shot, I shot way behind him. Huh? That's, that's normal. And he landed about three miles over there. They, they do that too. That's normal too, isn't it? That's the grouse hunting, right? That wraps up grouse hunting to a T. What I find is I've been hunting pheasants for so much, that when I'm walking out here, my mindset is to look for where the pheasants might be. You don't want the strong, the thick cover. You want this, you know, these nice hill edges. And... Well, on to another plan, huh? The other plan was to take on another chunk of rolling prairie. The three of us and our dogs spread out to begin the march. Well, this is about Mile 15, I think. That's the one thing you can assure yourself of with hunting these prairie grouse. You're gonna walk. Suddenly, dogs were pointing. Got a point down here. Grouse were flushing. And coyotes were leaving the country. In all of this, here we go, right here. Matt drew first blood. Look at that, Bob. Nice prairie chicken. One bird down. Took a quick shot at him and got him. Then, more in the air. Oh, of course, there's always that bird. I don't suppose you got that one. Good bird, another chicken. Another prairie chicken. Nice barring on it, look at that. That's what we're here for. That's why we walk all that way. It's unique. One day it can be as easy as a pheasant hunt. Not the pheasant hunting's easy, but the next day you could put on five, six miles before you get to them. And you can, you can plan and think, well, I think I kind of know what they'll be doing today based on the weather and the wind, but it's not always the case. And they'll fool you. They'll be where they want to be. Speaking of weather, yesterday our prairie hunt had turned into a cold monster with gusts of wind enough to lean on. Over on the river, not even seagulls could fly upstream. Nevertheless, we were determined, if not a little stupid. This bird hunting is supposed to be enjoyable, and usually it is, but today, I don't know how long I'm gonna last. 
Mojo is the focus of today's Purina Power Card. Mojo is a German short-haired pointer. He's a male who's four years old and is an absolute huntaholic. Wow. They were they must have just been here. We're gonna put some birds up. Just out of this wind a little bit, so we'll see what happens. Alright. Get on them quick, huh? Yeah. Okay. You got that right. Let me tell you what. If a bird gets up in this wind, don't bet on me, okay? To me it's worth it. Every every step is worth it because it's just something that you can't do everywhere. Come on, let's go hunt them up. Step after windy step, it became obvious. Hunting wily birds under these conditions was, well, ridiculous. They might just be kind of miserable out here too, like kind of we are, you know? Yeah. Wild wind, wild birds. Prairie chicken. That's gotta be a skunk. Wild skunks. Leave it alone. Tomorrow sounded like a better idea. The Flush, brought to you by Carlson's Choke Tubes, Polaris, Orvis, the official hunting and gear outfitter of The Flush, and by Yeti Coolers. When you head west to go hunting for South Dakota's prairie grouse, reaching the Missouri River is like reaching a ribbon that leads back in time. You know, another fascinating thing about this country is looking down on the Missouri River. Way back in 1804, this is the same river Lewis and Clark took on their infamous journey to try to find the Pacific. Now, of course, the river's all changed. But those hills over there, those are the same hills that Lewis and Clark looked at. They haven't changed much since 1804. There's a channel break line, old channel. Chamberlain resident Jim Rustell has his own Missouri memories, all geared to catch walleyes. Well, there's really two or three main methods. Bottom bouncer fishing with, with live bait is probably the most popular with spinners or without. One late afternoon, Jim offered to take me out on his river pontoon and explore this part of the Missouri now known as Lake Francis Case. A night crawler hooked to a spinner was the bait. The rest of walleye fishing is a hunting game. Well, I can't even get a bite. I don't know why that is. Hunt till you catch one. Come on, just one walleye. Got one on here. Oh yeah, well they're beautiful. 15 inches, no. No. Half inch short. <laughs> well, first fish anyway. You've been getting all the bites though. I'm not sure how much longer I can take that. You trade rods? <laughs> no, that would be embarrassing then. Come on, Jim, catch another one now. You're the expert. What can I say? Yeah, a little shy, maybe. Kind of the same as the last one. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, 15 and a half. Well, there's an eater. There you go. You could be a good fisherman, but you're not that much better. I got a two ounce bouncer on that one. You might have a little bit lighter bouncer. Yeah, I do. But you gave me faulty gear? No, they were, we were catching them on those one ounces. I'm looking for an excuse. Yeah, just having a little fun until I can pull in a little more fun. All right, here you go. Another one. 
Here you go, boys. Here you go. That the one? I don't know. He feels Fish. like a big monster, but like you said, that rod. Fish of the day. Might be the fish of the day. Well, might be. Close. Close, but maybe. Let's see. What do you think, Jim? Is he an eater? Yeah, a little bit short. All right. Give him another. He's nice and fat. He yeah. looks He looks good eating. There we go. Bingo. That's a beautiful fish. All right, you grow up. Thank you very much for your time. You know, if you haven't been catching anything, and then you finally do, you become gleeful. I'm gleeful. With grouse in the hills and walleyes in the river, well, does it get any better? I'd call it number one in my book. I, I just love fishing this river. The, the walleye fishery is pretty consistent up and down the whole river, and it's year round. Coming up, we'll return to the prairie and resume our search for the bird species that watched Lewis and Clark go by. They like these windswept open hilltops and for, for big cover for them is, you know, buck brush that gets three feet tall at most. That's what they're keying in on and their feet on the berries on that stuff, but I mean it's not the thick cattails and that kind of stuff that you look at when you're pheasant hunting. When the quest is for prairie grouse, my partners Matt Morlock and Jim Ristow know what the game is all about. I don't know that I've made a conclusion about any kind of pattern with grouse. Uh, just when you think you maybe have it figured out, you'll go on a two hour marathon hike and not see a bird. And then you might drop in a, in a draw and, and there they are. And that's what keeps it going, keeps it exciting and makes it worth it. And that's exactly what we did. Kept on a going. There goes another one. Third shot. Bring him here, buddy. Good dog. Good boy. Good boy, buddy. Yeah. Another good South Dakota day. For no obvious reason, They're too far away. Suddenly, we were into birds. All prairie chickens, helter skelter. Find him, girl, find him. That a girl, good dog. All right. Oh, you got a little life in you. Good dog, oh, a prairie chicken, huh? Beautiful. Hi, right, Raven, that good girl. Zipper! Zipper! We walked in on them, expecting one, and there was two. Boy, that's a pretty bird and, there. And got the double. That doesn't happen every day, no. I'll tell you that. No, that's... Good tip, man. You know, sometimes you get lucky and you, you, you see one land in a spot and it never hurts to go check it out. And 
there so they were. That's what you come up with. That finishes out the limit. Doesn't get any better than that. For folks who have never seen a prairie chicken versus a sharp tail grouse, what's, what's the difference here, if we can explain it? Well, there's two real big things to look for. Um, the first one is this barring on the chest feathers. Uh, prairie chickens are going to be all barred like this. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a sharp tail is going to have just speckled spots all over it. Yeah, we're kind of like arrow-like figures. Yep. They're sharp. Yep. Yeah. And the, uh, the other big thing is... The when tail? Well, you can see when, you're when they're flying more is Squared. they got this squared black tail. Yeah. Like that, you know. Where a sharp tail has, guess what? A really sharp tail. <laughs> Not quite like a pheasant, but it's yeah. you know, it's going to stick out like that. Now these about the size of a hen pheasant. Well, uh, what about the meat qualities? Of the Prairie chickens and sharp tails are both the same. They got a little darker meat, um, but they get a bad rap. They uh, people, a lot of people say they're not good to eat. Yeah. The key with these things is you don't overcook them. Um, it's kind of like a woodcock. Feathers go all the way down the leg here, and Matt, that's for what purpose? Yeah, you know, it's an adaptation. We figure from the, for the cold climates. Mm -hmm. um, they've it's, learned. It's a way to. Yep. You know, they've they've learned. To, you know, this country gets pretty desolate in the wintertime. You know, we can get a couple feet of snow on the ground with howling winds, like we're seeing today. You know, the windier day. They've evolved to survive this prairie. Yeah. Prairie storm, so to speak. Prairie storm, exactly. You earn them. You sure do earn them. Yeah, you earn them all right. As it's been said, the first time you hunt them, it's for sport. The next time, it's revenge.